Hey, what up, people? How's it going? This is Bharat here. Hope you're having a super awesome day. Welcome back to another video on Flutter. In this video, it's a little bit different from what we have been doing so far. Uh, this video is going to be discussing about two different languages. We're going to be comparing both of them with the web development domain. We, we, we have React JS in one hand and the Flutter for web in the other. And even though Flutter for web is still under wraps, we're going to be discussing about is this going to be the best web development language in the coming years? And we're going to be discussing as much as possible. I have the answer at the end of this video. We're going to be touching about every single aspect of this web development and discuss which is the best for our, our suitable needs. I also have a simple reveal at the end of this video. I'm going to be discussing about what is the future of this channel, what I'm going to do with a couple of months time or three months time. And I hope you guys will support that. If you want to support that, don't forget to smash the like button, also subscribe button so that you guys can stay tuned with what our content I'm going to be posting in my channel right now. All right, let's get this ball rolling with the first concept of React.js. React.js actually started out as a simple JavaScript library and not a framework. So the difference between library and a framework is that library is just like a simple plug and play where you want to plug this library. And if you do not plug this library, it's still okay. There is not going to be a massive change in how the user is going to see the difference. So library was, this React.js library was created as a support mechanism to fasten the speed fasten the development of the UI elements alone that we see actually uh, for the web-based web -based website. So for example, if you have a Facebook or a Twitter and you have different elements that are present in this website and you, the Facebook created the React.js as a means to speed in the process of creating these web-based elements alone and they did it very well. So React.js was actually a simple web development language which concentrates on the declarative and a component-based programming construct. So what does that mean? So we have a declarative style of development which is nothing but we don't do the always usual stuff of writing a Java, like an object oriented programming instead of that. We go for the declarative approach where everything is supposed to be considered as simple broken down elements. And you're going to discuss about how that is going to contract or constant and it's going to communicate with each other. So that is how React JS actually developed into a very strong language over the last five years, if I can say so. And it has become a very integral part of any web development. A project that has been taken out in the world right now. So that is how important React JS is for the web developers. The Flutter, on the other hand, is a very simple approach, uh, but it's going to take a little bit of a different route. Uh, what it's going to do is that uh, React JS is actually depend on this language called the JSX, which is actually nothing but it's a simple construct again from the JavaScript, and it's going to derive this construct from the JavaScript and it's going to develop these web page web page uh, elements. So instead of that, Flutter on the other hand is going to believe on this concept of every element being a widget, and the widget is actually going to be constructed into a tree. All the trees have different type of widgets discussing or communicating with each other, and that is how Flutter actually born came into existence. That is how the story of Flutter came into existence. But is it going to be applicable for the Flutter web? That is another completely different question. So we have two different concepts in our hand right now. One is the elemental approach or the declarative approach where it still elements are going to be the smallest building blocks of the React.js website. And it's going to talk with each other. We have a front end. We have a, we can, we can still communicate with the back end through the front end's uh, JSX approach. On the Flutter, it's completely different. It's, it's even though it forms the same tree and the widget and the elements are going to talk with each other. The, the widget are going to be constructed as one single tree and this tree is going to be built every single time. So if, if you guys are finding this jargon very difficult to understand, I'm actually going to be making a video on what is React.js and how you can start with the basics of React.js in a very simple manner. That video is going to be coming up right next. So do not forget to check all of that out in your spare time. All right, so the main point of this video was to discuss about how is React.js and Flutter for web going to be for the web developers. Uh, there is this constant uh, thought of creating one language and using it for across every single domain that is out there. For example, let us assume we have an Android programming language, so like say an Android or Kotlin. We can develop only that environment specific language, environment specific apps. For example, Android, you can only build Android. You know Swift, you can build iOS. And now the concept of creating hybrid apps, which are nothing but just one language can build two different applications is really, really cool. But we have a different approach for these environments. Mobile is different. Mobile game is different. And in the coming days, when people started thinking about why can't they use the same language for a web and I'm going to be building the same building blocks, I'm going to be having the same constant idea of having every element as a building block for web also. That is where the Flutter web extended and from, from, from building a Flutter mobile, it extended to Flutter web. 
uh so if you're looking to build for the web you have to think about the simple problem in your mind what if you have a simple website like say for example we have a twitter or a facebook the twitter is going to be having three different elements in that one is let us assume the search bar or the graph search bar with right at the top and we have the profile information or any hot information that is coming out in the left or the right depending on which our platform you are on and the user feed which is nothing but say every tweet that has been coming out or every facebook data or every facebook image of that has been posted is going to be coming in your feed now the react js looks at a, this as a three different components one at the top one at the left one at the center the flutter ui still sees them as three different widgets but the declarative approach says that you are not going to refresh or you're not going to build another component unless the data in the component changes for example let's assume that the user is going to click on a search bar and is going to enter a name to find and go to that profile and like that profile or follow that profile and all of whatever whatever that he or she wants to now when the user clicks on the search bar the we react js what react js does is it's going to just refresh the search bar alone and just leave the other two as such because user user cannot communicate with all the three at the same time so that is how react js uh, reacts to this type of user interaction while on the flutter web which is in, which is nothing but still again the widgets are going to be placed in such a way that everything is a simple simple widget however when the user clicks on a widget which is nothing but the user search bar what happens is that the flutter engine in the background refreshes the entire list of trees or the trees of widgets from the root to the leaf for example let us assume that i have a very basic background and i have a search bar at the top when the user is trying to click the search bar from the background everything is refreshed and we are again seeing a refreshed canvas on the screen so that is what i tried to dis- explain in my previous video which is on why is flutter web very disappointing because the flat the web engine itself or the web site itself is trying to go through multiple refreshes before giving us what we need this may work out in say for example a mobile which is not going to have lot of components a lot of elements that is going to be stacked in a very simple screen for example let's assume a 6 inch screen we might have at the max 15 elements tagged which is going to be packed with each other but if you take a say a huge web website which is going to be viewed on a desktop we might have anywhere up to 100 different elements that is easily fitable in this simple screen so when the flutter engine tries to refresh the entire thing from the root it is trying to refresh the entire website and that is how you see the next part which is the user is trying to click user enters the user name and all of these are different different refreshes for flutter why for react js it is just the one refresh on that component alone and that is how these two different languages at the heart of their core system differ from each other so that is the main difference between how they react or how they talk with each other and why is react js still a very popular language with the web developers and the more of a popular library with the web, web developers why flutter web is trying to make it like that but it's going to have a very hard time on the other hand now coming back to the engine which runs or supports the react js and the flutter the, the react js is completely dependent on the node npm to create its own uh, it's, it to, to render the final output to the user while on the other hand the flutter web is going to be depending on the flutter engine to build the flutter web component and it's going to be rendering on the user's uh, website for example let's like, say a local host in the google chrome it's going to be it's going to be like that at the heart both of them are same uh, both of them are trying to build a component or build a simple buildable uh, prop and it's going to put it out in the user's uh, screen which is a website but the w- one more thing that we have to consider at this point is that npm is as old as a fine wine so it has been through a lot of different iterations and lot of different source code submissions over the last 10 years and it's become this very dependable engine to run your react js code the flutter web on the other hand is still not optimized it's still in the wraps i understand that but it's still not optimized we have a lot of crashes uh, reported and uh, we still have even difficulties running it in any other version that is lower than say an i5 processor uh, with 4 gb of ram they, anything lower than that is going to be difficult to run your flutter engine because it is very bloated it's a very high at this point of time and you're going to be having a little bit of difficulty in running your flutter engine in your environment all right so begin with i'm just going to be going to the google trends and uh, seeing comparing these two languages at the heart uh, the important thing we have to note here is that how is the flutter web picking up i understand that it's a very new language but how is it picking up for us let's say react js 
we enter the term react js and we'll compare it with flutter so the react js is going to be in the blue line while the flutter is going to be at the red line now the flutter itself is a very new language and it's picking up quite fast but when you could just jump to the front of web which is for the web developers in particular we kind of find that it's still at the bottom for example let's see here it's actually over the last one year it's for the past 12 months it's been the react js has still been the king but around this time in november or november 18th 24th when the flutter came out with the, the flutter release of flutter 18 conference and it's it's it, it did go down after that but after that it's still been maintaining that it's just been holding the fort for a very long time and, and then the interest in react js is not it come down at all around this time the flutter web was released uh, because i remember this the hummingbird project and uh, it just picked up for a very long time for that stable it's been stable from that and since the flutter web is not officially released uh, it's just like it's been under wraps for more than a more than a year and a half we have to wait for any interest to peak up but the web developers are not finding it that interesting at this point of time it's still react js react js react js only 97 it's just been like a peak it's been peaking up for a very long time and it's it, this is a very good sign now just i just show you guys i'll just remove the flutter web at all i'll just remove this from this i'll just come show you guys how much the react js has been peaking over the last 5 years Uh, it's been showing some tremendous uh, improvement because it it started around i think 2010 and it's just going up ever since that the graph is really good we can see that uh, let's put 2004 all right so this is the time when react js got released so 2012 2013 time and it's just it's just a good curve to have it's it's just like it's it's not a plateau at, at any point of time at all it's just going up only and interest is definitely going to also have lot of different values to that the primary value is uh, how how is it going to be impacting your job offer so if for example if you have a react js knowledge is going to is it going to help you in getting a job definitely yes because look at this look at the popularity of react js people do want react js developers and it's important that you learn this language or right, i hope you guys see the saw the difference between the react js and the flutter web and we saw that actually the trends picking up really really good for react js it's been peaking it's been hitting peaks over consistent period and it's just peaked at the right time and why not to learn the flutter react js language right now technically speaking react js is not a language the javascript is the language while react js is a simple library which you can still learn which which is it's not even that complex to learn at all and it's really been a very good thing the flutter web on the other hand it's got a long curve to do even though it's not officially released it's been under buzz for a very long time more than a year and a half and if flutter web has to peak it has to have it has to come out with a very good flutter engine in the first place and i'm going to be repeating this because the flutter web engine was definitely disappointing uh, you if you guys can recall back from the last video that i made and you guys kind of backfired this at me saying that i do not know what i'm talking about so yeah maybe i do not know what i'm talking about with respect to flutter web but uh, i've had flutter mobile for a very long time i have good results out of that you know what's done projects for a lot of people so with respect to flutter web it's definitely got a long curve to go and we just have to wait and watch what is the game with flutter web like i mentioned when i was showing you guys the popularity chart that a uh, data showing that react js is way too hot and we cannot blow it off uh, just like that so uh, why i'm bringing this point up uh, again is because the reason that react js when it is really, really hot or so any of whenever language is really hot and it's had some track record in the market like people have been talking about it for some time now it is it is that time that period of the year when you definitely have to learn that language or in this case our library so when you are having that in your portfolio it's going to make a lot of difference and that is the main reason why i wanted to make this video as well so coming back to the last part of this video where i said right at the beginning that i'm going to be giving out a important revealing an important thing the important thing is going to be that uh, we're going to first discuss why flutter web and react js so who's the winner uh, hands down react js uh, flutter web has got no fight at all in this uh, i'm i'm being very brutal at this point because of the reason that flutter web has got like a, a minimum of 5 uh, years of curve to go through before it's been accepted by web developers uh before it can even pass the simple test of is it going to be feasible to develop in with flutter web we have to make sure that it is actually going to a rigorous um, performance enhancement or optimization before it even hits the market in the stable release 
so yeah react js is the hands down winner so when you have a winner why should why should we not learn about that and that is why i made this video the video is actually to tell you guys that over the coming couple of months of time i'm going to be talking only about react js react js and react js only and we're going to be discussing all the concepts with respect to react js and when the time is ripe and when the time is right we'll also be transitioning from react js to the react native framework and learn about developing for mobile so all of the super stuff, fun stuff is coming up it's going to be a learning curve for me as well because i know react js but i'm really not con con confident with react native so i'm going to be taking this as a learning opportunity and also show you guys how to learn a language faster and a lot of the fun stuff is coming up right next in this video and right next in this channel as well so uh, beautiful times and bright times up ahead and i hope you guys can uh, follow me with that through that and also like this uh, subscribe to this channel so that you guys can grow as a grow as a community and make sure that we learn a lot of cool things uh, coming up right next is uh, react js tutorials i'm going to be dropping probably three to four tutorials every week and hope you guys can like that and i'll still keep flutter mobile in touch like a lot of you guys mentioned in my previous live stream you guys wanted me to talk about flutter web every single week and not just flutter web i mean flutter mobile in general i'm going to be doing that i have a lot of content for flutter mobile as well so i'll just mix and match this but the primary focus is going to be about react js and only so we'll just have a long curve to do that probably a four to three to four video a week is going to be my target my personal target as well and if you can do that we can we're going to learn this language much faster once that is done smooth transition into react native is what i'm expecting and i hope you guys are also on board with that all right let's jump to the next video probably i'll release it i'll release that every like i said three to four times a week and we guys can learn a lot more from that and let me meet you there until then it's bharat peace out have a super awesome day take care